Handel had the most wonderful relationship with the royal family in England, uh, not least because, of course, it was German, as he was. Um, his arrival in London in 1710 was uh, followed just a few years later by the death of Queen Anne and the end of the uh, great line of Stuart monarchs uh, and the accession of the Hanoverians, uh, spearheaded, of course, by George I, who had slightly embarrassingly been Handel's boss at the court of Hanover. Uh, but uh, from then on, he uh, actually was crucial to uh, the court, as indeed he had been in Queen Anne's day. Queen Anne obviously thought the world of him, um, and gave him a huge pension of £200 a year, which in today's money is sort of £200,000 a year, I mean, vast, vast sums. And um, uh, when the, the Hanoverians arrived, uh, he became integral to their circle, and taught the young princesses, and, and some of them he'd of course known from his early days in Hanover. So he was closely connected to the royal family in whatever um, permutation. And so our program really celebrates uh, births, marriages, and deaths of, of royals, uh, beginning with uh, a birthday ode that he wrote for the aging and very obese by then, uh, Queen Anne. Um, but uh, they celebrated her birthday in a, um, a sort of formal way every year. And it was quite a tribute, actually, to this young foreigner uh, that he was asked to write a birthday ode for her. Uh, and uh, it was quite interesting that uh, the, the, the refrain, the, the, of all about the peace that she brings, actually is quite political, too, because the Peace of Utrecht was being signed at that very time uh, and uh, formulating, actually, uh, peace throughout Europe. Uh, but it is a, a, a glorious um, a amalgamation of texts about our monarch, uh, the great Queen Anne, and um, is that essential Handelian thing of being both spectacular and formal on the one hand, and quite intimate and affectionate on the other. It begins in this most wonderful way with just one voice, the countertenor. Uh, uh, very, very gently talking about her and moves into the realms of the cathedral. So it's uh, it's sort of quintessential handle, although he's young and she's old. The other two pieces, the marriage and the death pieces in our program, are both taken from the reign of George II, the son of George I, um, and with whom, as I said, Handel had this great connection from Hanoverian days, and indeed for whose own uh, coronation in 1727, Handel had written four massive coronation anthems, uh, one of which uh, Zadok the Priest has been performed at every coronation since, and indeed which we performed uh, at least for the Baroque last season. Um, George's eldest son, who was due to inherit the throne, of course, uh, was young Prince Frederick, and he married uh, another Hanoverian, Princess Augusta, in the 30s, and Handel wrote the wedding anthem uh, for their wedding in the 30s, and that's what we're going to be performing as charming. Um, and again, quite ceremonial, but quite private uh, anthem with arias as well as big choruses. Um, but then, sadly, the the funeral just a year after the uh, marriage of Frederick, um, was for Frederick's mother, George's, George II's wife, Queen Caroline, uh, and a very close friend of Handel's. And uh, this anthem, which eventually he turned into the first part of Israel in Egypt, um, is an extraordinary and very protracted lament, really, on the death of somebody either a nation in the case of Israel and Egypt, as he cleverly turned it into, or um, somebody large in the 
realm of monarchy. Um, and it, it is incredibly personal as, as well as um, fitting the bill for uh, a formal and solemn and indeed majestic occasion. Uh, the, you think he must run out of ideas for expressing grief and sorrow, and he doesn't, he just keeps them coming. But anyway, with the help of George Frederick, we will be celebrating um, that particular relationship between court and music in our concert. <laughs>